you potted your plant and now its leaves are droopy and yellow. This is called transplant shock. Transplant shock happens when your roots are damaged during repotting. Our plant's root systems are composed of all these different types of roots with all these fine, delicate little root hairs. When these delicate root hairs are missing, the plant isn't able to uptake as much water as it was previously. This is what leads to yellow droopy leaves. Hey plant peeps, just wanted to give you some care tips for your penis. Cactus. Now this little guy is pretty happy. This little guy? Not so much. So this particular variety does a great job of showing you when it's thirsty. And like most cactus, these are summer growers. So in winter time, they might be cold and a little bit wrinkled and it's hard for them to grow. See what I did there? So take a look at your penis, cactus. And if it looks a little bit wrinkled, give it a nice drink. Soon you'll have more than just a grower, you'll have a shower. Overwatering your house plants, part five. Two really good rules of thumb to live by to help prevent overwatering. Number one, it is almost always easier to save a thirsty plant rather than a plant that's rotted. And number two, always check the soil moisture. I work with house plants for a living. This is what different color spots mean on your fiddle leaf fig. First, let's start with red spots. These tiny little red spots are called edema. This actually can happen to humans as well, and it's caused by trapped excess fluid. It doesn't necessarily mean you got full blown root rot. We regret to inform you that if you've got Dark black spots like this, you might have root rot. But if they're lighter brown spots like this, it might just be a little thirsty. However, all these spots are like scars. So even if you have resolved the problem, they're not gonna go away. So don't think that because you have them, you're still doing a bad job. Forget about all the fancy plant gadgets. Here are the three things every plant parent should have. Extra all-purpose potting mix for repotting and replenishing. Neem oil for broad spectrum pest control and cleaning your plants and a spray bottle, AKA my favorite low tech way to humidify. Shaking your fig tree is one TikTok trend that actually checks out. Um, so what it does is it simulates wind in an outdoor environment and it strengthens the roots and the trunk. And ever since I shook my fig tree gently, um, I've gotten like seven new leaves and that might be because it's the spring season, but my fig barely grew at all last year and I'll show you all the new growth. It's really exciting. These guys just came in this week. This one is brand new. It's like a week and a half old. This is new. And then I have this one popping out of nowhere. And then look at this. There's four new leaves coming in here. I'm not saying it's because I've been shaking my fig tree, but I'm not not saying it's because I've been shaking my fig tree. Okay guys, we're doing it. This is how to care for your string of pearls. First, let's talk about lighting. The assumption that string of pearls need high direct light all day long is actually really untrue. These guys actually thrive in bright indirect light. Mine hangs out in my window all day long and because of my building, this is as bright as it gets. And with regards to lighting, you wanna make sure that that indirect light is hitting the top of the plant. I personally think watering is where people go wrong with this plant. It's been several months since I've actually watered this one and it is pushing out new growth like crazy right now. Because of how quickly they can develop root rot, they actually bounce back easier when underwatered. When you're new, don't be afraid to let the pearls get a little bit puckered or sad looking before you water them, and I personally bottom water. That'll give you a better idea of how often you need to be watering it. Good luck! Here's how you can be successful with the snake plant, otherwise known as the mother-in-law's tongue or sansevieria. Don't make fun of my talking. I got Invisalign yesterday. Anyway, let's start out with light. They prefer to have bright light. Uh, they'll grow much faster and they will actually bloom in bright light as well, but they can take uh, bright light, medium light, or low light, as you can see right here. If this plant doesn't live in your low light situation, nothing will. In the winter time, you can let them dry out about 75% between watering. This one isn't ready to be watered yet. You can see how there's wet soil still on there. In the summertime, you can let them dry out like 50% in between watering. And remember to thoroughly, thoroughly soak them Right here I'm showing you, I use granule fertilizer um, throughout the year, but use whatever's best for your lifestyle. When I repot them, I repot them in 75% cactus soil and 25% houseplant. Today's plant tip. Today we're gonna talk about browning leaves. Brown leaves can occur from an overexposure to direct sunlight burning the leaves, low humidity, overly dry soil, or an excess of minerals like fluoride that can be found in most tap water. If only the tip of your plant is turning brown, use a pair of scissors to cut along the browned edge.
If an entire leaf is brown, you should remove it from the plant. Once you finish pruning your plant, make sure you give it a good watering. For this large corn plant in our bird of paradise, we like to pop them in the shower and give them a nice soap. Hey plant peeps. Is this you? Is, is this your plant? Let's, let's look at that for just a second. Do you see how deep in the pot it is? Do you see how the leaves are translucent and kind of turning downwards? Do you see how much organic matter is in that soil? Mm, that's a no-no all the way around. When your plants are planted deeply in the pot, they don't get a lot of air circulation. You really only want to be about half an inch to an inch from the rim of the pot. The leaves being translucent and turned downwards is typically a sign of both overwatering and definitely not getting enough light. Your plant should get anywhere between six to eight hours of bright light or you need a grow light. If the soil is too organic, it might lead to overwatering. That's why those leaves kind of look translucent. So adding more grit is really important. Now the great news is, is you get to go buy another one and look at what you've learned. That one's probably gonna die. I work with house plants for a living. And girl, I'm tired of seeing it. Your leaves are dusty. They're dusty and they're not getting the amount of light they should be getting. We have to fix this. Well, it's true that new leaves tend to be a little bit more glassy glassy and then the older leaves, we still love them, but you know, they're just not gonna be ever quite this shiny. But regardless, we have got to get that dust off because it does not rain in your house. Gonna get your spray bottle. If you add a neem oil concentrate to it, even better. Then you're gonna go and then a little to yourself too, maybe. Very important, you need to hold the underside of the leaf and then take a cloth, preferably microfiber, but I don't have one today. And you're just gonna gently dust the leaves. It's very important to hold the backside of the leaf or else the whole leaf might come off. That would be sad, wouldn't it? Are you going somewhere and don't wanna leave your plants behind? Before you start pawning them off to friends, here's how to pack your plants for moving with things you probably already have at home. All you need to make sure these guys have a safe journey is a box, some tape, newspaper for padding, some water, and paper towels. First, we'll start with our small and medium plants, making sure they're fully watered, and then we take some paper towel and get it nice and wet. You're gonna wanna go ahead, lay that paper towel right on top of the soil, and then tape that up super tight. This is gonna keep the soil steady and make sure your plant stays nice and hydrated. Then you can go ahead and repeat that for all of your small and medium sized plants. Grab your box, fill it up with newspaper padding, and I like to put my saucers in there too for a tiny bit of extra stability. With this big long viney guy, you can just go ahead, pop them right in there, and then you're gonna wanna pull up the vines and fit in all of your other plants. Then you're gonna wanna fill in any space with as much padding as humanly possible. Tuck everything in, seal that baby up, make sure you keep her upright and you're good to go. But we'll survive in lower light situations, like for part two where I are you about to buy your first house plant? I work at the largest retail greenhouse in Denver. Let me give you five tips. On Tip number one, don't buy a teeny tiny plant. Or to take care of a juvenile plant if you don't know what you're doing. Buy a more established plant to start with. Tip number two, you're more likely to overwater your plant than underwater your plant. For the most part, you're gonna let your house plants dry out. Tip number three, immediately treat your plant with a granulated systemic upon bringing it home so that you are preemptively treating your plant for any kind of diseases or pest issues it might have. Tip number four, always check the entirety of the plant before buying it. Look at the leaves, look at the roots. It should all look very uniform. Start with an already really nice plant. Don't buy those rescue plants that are 50% off. Those aren't for you, maybe a more advanced person. Number five, know that that plant might not survive and it might be an experiment, but you need to keep trying. So you want to have house plants, but uh, you keep killing them. Let's start with some basics. Always get a pot with a hole. I don't care how fucking cute that pot is, Stephanie. It's important for drainage. You also recommend terracotta for everything. With the teacot hole combo, you'll never get root rot again. Teacot hole. Teacot again for the win, because you'll learn the weight. You'll be like, oh, that's that's a packed pot. Teacot hole. Or you'll be like, oh, I need to water that. Teacot hole. We'll leave it there for today. Maybe this is like tips one of 8,000. I don't fucking know. But holes are a must. Of course, there are ways to do it without a hole, but it's just not worth the grief it'll cost you. I was a bad plant mom. The pot I had my bird of paradise in had good drainage, but I put it inside a decorative pot and that pot didn't have any drainage and I overwatered the plant and it couldn't actually drain out. So it was sitting in old stale water and starting to get root rot. So here's what I did. I washed the roots and leaves off with water. 
I soaked the plant in a pot of water with a 10 to 1 hydrogen peroxide mixture for two hours. I then hose the plant off again and put it back in water to sit overnight so I can repot it tomorrow now that the roots are clean and hydrated. Let's talk about some do's and don'ts of traveling or shipping plants. There are certainly some and I'm breaking a lot of rules right now, but let's talk about them. Plants, if it's below 45 degrees or so, should be wrapped and, and prepped for that cold weather. Typically it's um, in some type of plastic wrap or sealed in a type of brown paper. So say you're picking up a plant at Home Depot and it's kind of cold outside, it's winter, and you're taking that house plant outside into your current home and it's not, they don't wrap shit there. And um, you're wondering why your plant rapidly declines as soon as you get it home. It's because it already has root damage from the cold. And I'll show you what a uh, root damaged plant looks like now. Sometimes it's a brown circle surrounded by yellow or sometimes it's an abrasion that's browning and surrounded by yellow. It looks similar to bacterial infection. So you want to learn about Mary Mo moss balls? Actually not moss, they're an algae. Don't eat them. Do not put them in direct sunlight. They're little baby bottom lake dwellers from Japan, okay? You're gonna need a raglet for what's next. Take them to your local sink. Clean, just clean the sink, you and dump. Now get that cold water streaming. A lot of that. Make sure it's cold, but okay, it's very cold. Bloop them. Bloop, 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 bloop. Bloop, they're fill. I line them up by size so they know. If you're buying some expensive dream plant online, I want to explain the difference between top and mid cuttings. So with a top cutting, you're not really impacting the plant. You cut right below the top of the node. It's going to keep growing from the same growth point. When you buy a mid cutting, the plant needs to activate a whole new growth point. That's why they produce smaller leaves and take longer to produce new ones. Lucky Bamboo Care. These plants are great for beginners. If you're growing it in water, all you have to do is stick it in a jar, make sure that the roots are always covered. Lucky Bamboo likes indirect sunlight. These are kept in a northern window. Just change the water out about twice a month to avoid algae. The most unfortunate part about these is they are toxic to cats and dogs. Here's how to take care of this spider plant, a super, super cool plant. First things first, they're going to need bright light. They need to see a real nice wide view of the sky, especially when you have a plant that's variegated like this. The white parts are not photosynthesizing, so you have to make sure that you're maximizing the efficiency of the green parts. I like to repot them when the roots are coming out of the bottom drainage holes. However, they do really well pot bound also and tend to produce more babies in my experience this way. If you're going to repot, I like to use a one-to-one -one ratio of houseplant soil mixed in with cactus soil so they can drain pretty well. I like to fertilize with just a general purpose fertilizer during the spring and summer months. That's when they're fastest growing. If you want to remove these babies, just make sure the roots are about a half inch long before you take them off and then just plant them up. Talk air plant care, specifically Spanish moss. I water mine about every two weeks and I start by filling up my sink with water and then fully submerging them. It helps to pat them down and make sure they're fully in. Then after about 10 minutes, I carefully take them out to drip on a towel. After that, I just hang them up to dry the rest of them. 